Yeah, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Ili Jukka Kilpela, and I'm head of R&D and technology at Storains, located in my home country, Finland, nowadays again. Um, I try shortly to describe you how this sector actually goes. Maybe I should start from the EU forests. Uh, we are utilizing about 52% of annual growth of the EU area forest growth and actually about 65% of the growth easily available for, let's say, industrial uses as biomass. So there is room for growth even here old densely populated Europe. Globally, the situation is a bit more complicated. There are countries like China and India, which are strongly dependent on, on non-wood biomass, straws, uh, reed, etc. And there are countries like Brazil, with a lot of opportunities to increase plantation-based forestry and, and thus to ex expand their industrial presence. Um, what I try to tell during coming about 10 minutes is that the sector is renewing fast. We are learning to mimic, in other words, to copy Mother Nature and how she makes processing of things. And I also try to describe you the role of this 2 million direct job opportunity sector, forest sector, and its related cluster areas here in Europe. Uh, Europe has traditionally been the leading continent actually concerning our sector. 20% of production has been exported overseas. And one reason why the sector has been facing so dramatic changes has been that partly because of the euro currency and its strength, partly because of strategic decisions of countries like China to increase their own capacities. These export opportunities overseas have been gradually disappearing. This has made the strongest or best European companies also to, to, to be much more strongly than earlier present in, in countries like China, Brazil, etc. Stora Enzo, I don't, well, I guess many of you know our company. Uh, concerning our innovation strategy, actually, maybe I should mention the list of, of our key activities. Printed electronics is an area we invest very much for things like safer homes of the future and partly for intelligent pharma packaging, etc. It's the micro materials, micro technology, where we have been investing for about 20 years actually, and, and also running already commercial scale activities. It's all kind of new bio based barriers, which are very close to our existing packaging or, or, or let's say, home, home building activities. It's forest biotechnology, how to get forests to grow healthier, and it's also future bulk mill biorefinery concepts. You, if you are an engineer, you, you might, might call them future separation techniques, but there are other features in, in that. And then future wood building concepts. Future European homes will be more and more built of wood. We have been successfully launching 8 to 12 floor office and uh, or flat buildings built out of wood, and, and those solutions seem to be very, very competitive ultimately. Um, our company has a vision which is very close to the vision of our sector Europe-wide, actually. Uh, and, and to make long story short, we need a new approach concerning materials and particularly biomaterials. And this idea is also or has been the cornerstone of our forest sector technology platform, which was created six years ago and is right now uh, updated actually and this, this, is, uh, this has been the driver also in our efforts to invest our time and, and, and other resources to this EU initiative called public-private partnership bioeconomy. We work hard to make that happen and we believe that it will be good for Europe. Um, 
just to mention a couple of issues related to my company, which, however, have a wider meaning. 35% of food is globally lost because of lacking or improper packaging before consumption. And our dream is to, to have solutions for that, aseptic systems, which would be based on uh, bio materials, if needed, uh, re or in any case, recyclable materials, and, and if needed, biodegradable materials. And, and that's one strong area where the influence in global economy and the standard of living globally is very, very remarkable. Maybe one more example. It looks like biofuels will be needed for aviation, for long-haul long trucks, for boats, no matter how good electrical cars, etc., we are able to create. Um, that's one area where our sector has to invest in any case, and Europe will need that kind of solutions. And, and concerning, let's say, holistic use of biomaterials, it's important to keep in mind that we need to avoid suboptimizing. We need to maximize the value we get out from, from our biomass. And maybe this picture gives one, 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 one view on that topic. I think biofuels should be produced if and when really needed. Lignin materials open another option, no matter if the raw matter is the wood from the forest or if that's some other biomass from bagasse, sugar beets, whatever, or something from, from agro product otherwise. Here, a cynical researcher, of course, says that, OK, but we will need one more century of research before we start to understand the chemical structure of lignin. OK, we have challenges, but still, that avenue must be gone further. Micro and nano materials in general will make many things possible earlier, not that possible, or at least not that easy, and they will open totally new opportunities opportunities to utilize bio-based solutions. And let's say functional biochemistry, which was earlier touched here already, will be making many things from pharma to industrial applications different and, and easier to be delivered. Um, I, would, I, well, I happen to be a researcher by heart, but still it's important to keep in mind that no matter if we talk about chemical industries or forest industries or whatever, or automobile industries, and analyze important innovations ultimately leading to wide commercial applications, 60 to 70 percent have the roots at customer interface, you might call customer cooperation. And that's a real challenge. How do we as a sector, as companies and as professionals work better closer in real partnership with our customer organizations and ultimately with the European and global consumer. That's a real challenge we face. It's no, no reason to underestimate the important, importance of, of other partners, like partners from the other segments or partners in the value chain, being your suppliers or, your, or, or, or something like that, but 20, 30 percent is a typical percentage of important innovation sources or ideas from them, and only 10 to 20 percent of important things have the roots at the chambers of the researchers. But please keep in your mind that researchers are needed to make things happen, no matter in, from which box you look at this big picture. That was my attempt to try to tell where this forestry sector actually goes. Thank you very much.